There's my snow boiling for my morning tea. I thought I had coffee here, but I don't. So uh, I'll make do with uh, tea. I received word that some people are looking forward to a video of the trek out. Uh, <laughs> I am not one of those people. Uh, you know, this was really, so let me tell you what happened. Yesterday, um, I wore boots in and these boots are so heavy and the snow is so deep that every step <laughs> was so last night I got these horrible leg cramps and I, I didn't know what I was going to do. So let me show you what I'm going, let me show you what, uh, what my solution is. So I have socks on and then I, I have plastic bags wrapped around, <laughs> wrapped around my feet and then these, um, hiking shoes I had here. So this is good. They're much lighter. Um, and I will carry... I'm going to carry the boots out uh, with me. So um, that's so I'm going to be soaking wet and freezing feet, but at least it'll be an easier walk, I hope. The refrigerator's emptied out and shut down. And here's a couple of containers of butter and a few hot dogs I brought in yesterday, but I didn't have them all. And I know you're thinking, oh, that's disgusting, leaving that out all year. You know what? That's going to be gone by tonight. I don't know who will eat it, but somebody will. Okay. Bye until next spring. All right. I'm about to start on the trek out. There's the road ahead. I got the boots in the bag. Got my baggies on my shoes. And off I go. You can see how deep this snow is. So it's quite a bit easier, I think, wearing these hiking shoes. But it's quite a bit colder, too. Not only is it a little easier because I'm wearing lighter shoes, I'm also able to walk in my, in my own tracks. And that's, that's helping out, too. Can you hear that train in the distance? I feel a little like Robinson Crusoe when he saw the footprint in the sand because see this trail going off there? I did not make that. So I'm going to assume there's a hunter in the forest. And I'm going to assume he can see my protective orange, yellow, and red. Let's hope. Remember, I do look remarkably like a deer. I don't know if you can see that that black mark, but that is a deer passed through here not too long ago either because the snow hasn't been filling it in too much. But, uh, oh, I hope he, I hope he makes it through the winter. I did say I hope he makes it through the winter because this is a big buck. Look at the size of those tracks. I don't know if you can tell the size. Uh, I wish I could find a nice clear one. You know, it's kind of, oh, there's a nice clear one. See that? See that? See the two, the indents? You know what I like? <laughs> this buck obviously followed my tracks from last night. See, we all take the easy route when we can. And now I'm about, oh no, he took the other, see, look at this. He went, see his, uh, his tracks. He took a little, oh, I bet he just grabbed a little of that grass. So I'm about, I'm about halfway through now. Mr. Buck is back in my trail again. And, oh gosh. I'm a little about, a little over halfway through. Uh, but the thing is, the worst parts are yet to come because I have a bunch of, a couple big fields to go through. 
um, and that's where the snow is going to be the deepest. And I'm going to try to be a little quiet because I would love to see Mr. Buck. This is called Deerfield. It's not really called that, but that's what we call it because I often see deer there. But I don't think I don't think he's going to show himself at this time of day and that open. Uh, this is also where I go on porcupine safaris because sometimes this field is full of clover, and so many porcupines just go out and get fat before the winter. I wonder where they are. I bet they're up in. The, oh, they're sleeping out in the trees somewhere. Okay, I got, I got through the bay, this field, but I have another stretch of woods, which is okay, and then I have the biggest field of all, and it's the last field, and then I'm finished. <sighs> I'm finished, all right. <laughs> oh, what was I thinking? Well, how lucky am I? I just ran into a couple of snowshoers and they laid down this nice path for me the rest of the way. So I don't have to worry about that big field after all. Speaking of snowshoes, yesterday I saw some tracks of snowshoe bunnies, but I think there was some snow last night and they're covered them because they're not very deep, but they love this part of the woods. And this is it. I have arrived at what passes for civilization in New Hampshire. That little farmhouse over there and I have to cross that field. You know what happened this morning at 6.30? I got a call from the police. They had seen my father's truck where I left it and saw that it was there overnight. And so they contacted him and he gave them my number and they called me 6.30 in the morning to check up on me. That was pretty good. You know, because what if something happened? I bet they thought I was a hunter who got in some trouble. Or, you know, somebody walking out here having a heart attack or something. But I thought that was really good. Uh, but I said, no, I'm fine. Everything's great. Well, that's that. Did it. Oh, man. Would I do that again? No. Let me tell you what I wouldn't do again. I will not leave my refrigerator and electricity going after September. That's lesson number one. Lesson number two, absolutely, I will do this. I'll do this again on purpose uh, just for the... It's so... It's just wonderful. But I'm going to get snowshoes. Never again with plastic bags and hiking shoes and too heavy boots. Snowshoes are the way to go. So, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd do that again. That was great.